Hi, everybody, and uh, welcome along to the show. Uh, coming to you uh, live from the Novotel uh, Darling Square today in uh, Sydney, Australia. Have uh, rushed over here for today to, uh, to catch up with a, uh, a couple of matters. So um, we will be joined, uh, we are hoping, very soon by uh, by Trader Ray, who'll come in, uh, Ray Gilmore, who'll come in and talk about uh, cotton seasonals. He's not in the room. You'll just message him. I don't think he'll be too far away. He is normally a very, very punctual man. Uh, so I'm expecting him to join reasonably soon. Um, Mike, could you pop a message out to Ash and ask him if he can join uh, just uh, in the meantime as well? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, while we're waiting for Ray to come in and join us, I'm going to talk for a few seconds. Guys, Ray will be here. It's going to be an amazing uh, show today. Look, I um, I've literally just got off an airplane, got to the hotel and uh, set this up. Um, if you can get him back, that'd be great. Thanks, um, Mike. Um, and uh, while I've been doing that, um, I'm really keen for this uh, session. Uh, the hope today is that Ray's going to come in and talk to us a little bit about how to access the cotton seasonal data better, how to use it better. We're going to talk a little bit about the uh, market bias group where it's in there. I'm hoping Ash can come and help me a little bit with some of that stuff. Um, but look, these guys find a real edge in the markets uh, with this stuff. And um, I think it's, um, I think it's, um, you know, I think it's something that we should all be aware of. And uh, look, one of the things that we've done is we've really simplified it out and we've made it a, um, so with us, uh, you can do uh, the cot. Um, just in the background, setting up some charts. Uh, we will have a bit of a look at a few charts, talk about them a little bit as we get used to. Uh, it's a little bit weird. That must have moved. I'm just looking for uh, Bitcoin and in, uh, in, uh, fusion markets. BCH, but there it is, it's gone up to the top. Oh, still doing a lot. Look, it looks uh, concerning. Look, let me get some charts up. Um, my, you could let me know. Um, oh, Ray, how are you going, Ray? I'm good, Paul. Good uh, Good evening, good good morning, whatever it happens to be. How are you doing? Mate, I'm doing fine. It's. Uh, I'm now in Sydney, so it's 9 p.m., not 11 p.m. I feel better already. Yeah, all, all is good here, all is good. Mate, um, look, today we're going to talk a lot, a lot about cotton seasonal data and um, I've got Ash in the room as well and, and you two really are our people for this. So you help us a lot with the data. For those in the strategy bias group, you do a, an hour long video every week and you're talking some detail about cotton seasonal. Um, Ash publishes a lot of the other stuff into the uh, into the market bias group where we do the summary um, and uh, the uh, then the individual currency uh, write-ups. And the, uh, the point of today really is to see if we can get for people a bit clearer about uh, how to find and use the data, and I think particularly, you know, how how to use, how to find it in the charts, how to how to go into our into our area and find what you're looking for, find the useful stuff versus the non-useful stuff, how to use it. We're going to have a bit of a chat about the new uh, the new cot data on Bitcoin, which we're now charting as well, and how we're going to use that. And I think most importantly, we're going to show them a few examples of how we've used it recently to read the market. Yeah, fantastic. Sounds good. Uh, it is great to have the uh, Bitcoin data in there. Uh, finally, took a bit of baffing around, but it's fantastic to see how it's actually progressed. I wasn't sure whenever they first launched the futures data for, for Bitcoin and we could get it through COT, I wasn't sure how it would respond compared to traditional markets being you know completely different. And it's f amazing actually to track to see how it's performed with the uh, commercial data in particular and how they've been buying before breaking highs every time, which is so uh, it's as usable as any other market, different from any other market, uh, but how it's been per performing, but very much usable. So it's fantastic to have. Cheers, sir. Right? Look, I'm really, I really am looking forward to that part. I think, uh, look, you're one of the friends of the show. We've had you on before. Uh, talk about a number of different topics today. Uh, I'm going to skip through the history stuff reasonably quickly, but let's spend a few minutes talking about how you got to be here. You and I met on a trading floor in London how many years ago? Oh, uh, must be going on near 10, Paul. It's not, it's nine at least. Yeah, I reckon it's more than 10, yeah. right? Why are we getting up there, you know? Um, I mean, we must have been both remarkably young, but young men at the time, obviously. Well, uh, I am, I'm still considerably long, young, so. Uh... And, uh, mate, we uh, we traded on the trading floor for a while. You turned up about the time that I left. I headed off to Singapore. You stayed on that floor for a period of time and, and honed your skills. And yeah. uh, now you're back in Ireland, really specialising in cotton seasonal data. Yeah, I've been pretty much 
cotton seasonal data has been the central focus to all of my trading pretty for, uh, seasonally a bit longer because I, I find it earlier uh, whenever I was trading and investing in stocks. But pretty much for the last eight, nine years, it's been caught. Uh, cotton seasonality has always been the focal point to what I've been trying to do and how to find which markets I want to trade. So it's a big part for what I do. So this is what you do for a living, right? You, you you trade for a living. This is this is what you do. You this this is it. This is the this this ride. this is the uh, epicenter of where it all happens. Just right here, screens screens all around me, and just yeah, this is it. It's between uh, playing golf and gym and charts. That's about it. Well, hopefully, reasonably soon, you are, they'll let you out. They're letting you out. They're letting you out tomorrow, is it? Or the, 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 the pub's open tomorrow. I'm actually getting my hair cut today. Yeah, yeah. Haircut oh, today. Yeah. Pub, pub's open tomorrow. You need a good hairdresser to find enough here to cut up there, buddy. Yeah, I'll, they'll still charge me enough anyway. We'll see. <laughs> so pub's open tomorrow, mate. Well, that'll be that'll be nice, eh? If it's, uh, yeah. One of the things being a trader, isn't it? The last uh, the last year has been shit for everybody, but uh, being a trader, at least you can do. At least we can get in front of some charts and do what we want to do, right? Look, we've got yeah. Ash in the room as well. Um, we did ask um, Ash uh, to pop in today in case uh, I've literally just got from the hotel in, in Sydney in case I got held up and uh, my flight got held up. So we asked him to pop in. We'll ask him to hang around if you don't mind. Are you okay for a little while, Ash? I'm all right for a bit, mate. Yeah, no, pro no problem. Mate, at some stage, not, not too far away, I'm going to ask you to show us a screenshot of the summary of the seasonal data. Okay. And in a, uh, a rundown of our uh, analysis of one currency so people can see how we do this stuff. And then Ray can talk a little bit more about the um, uh, accessing the data and the recording. So I just want to work through it. We'll, we'll have a look at that uh, stuff in uh, in that order. Look, uh, Ray, it's great to have you guys coming in the room, by the way. And if you are on, uh, if you're in the room and you have any questions, you're welcome to ask them. I'll get them to Ray. If you're on uh, on uh, Facebook or, or or not Twitter, no, Facebook or YouTube, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, then uh, if you have any questions, put them in the questions box and Maya will monitor those throughout the session. She'll get the questions to us and we will answer them. Look, Ray, one of the things you said to me was really, you want to get on to using this stuff. Let's not just talk crap all day. Let's get on to using this stuff. I was wondering if before we get into having a look at some of the ways we provide the data, can you show us an example recently of how cold or seasonal has helped you trade? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Where do I... Uh, I need to share, do I? I need to share my screen. Yeah. Wait a second. I was, There's an arrow at the bottom. Thankfully, during lockdown, it's something I haven't uh, had to do much is, is Zoom meetings, which, is, <laughs> yeah. which, has, been, which has been nice. This is one of those things, mate. I think people who uh, people who don't use it to present don't really understand that it's still a bit glitchy. That uh, right. it hides things from you when you're presenting sometimes. Mate, we've got the uh, the data here. We're on. You can see, yes? Yep. Yeah, we're good. Uh, the the easiest one probably to look at uh, that's that's already happened to go be through the examples probably would be the, the Japanese yen, um, and then maybe later in the show we can look at what I'm looking for going forward for the next week or week or two. But definitely one of the most uh, recent examples um, and the I move that we had. It has been great. in the. Sorry, Ray. That is great. I think looking at how you've used it in the past is a great starting point. Then we'll have a look at how we provide the data, which is starting from now as well. And then we'll talk about some of the stuff you're looking at doing in the future. I think we're going to talk about Bitcoin, cable, gold and silver today, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. Take a look at those markets. Uh, they're markets I'm watching closely, particularly pound. Um, uh, seasonal, it's a really interesting time in terms of seasonals. End of April and into May typically sees a lot of markets change direction and trend. Um, so I'm looking for, say, signs of that of the evidence of that coming through and caught, you know, we want to see the change in sentiment, we want to see the change in the positions as we get in, because I say typically pretty much bang on where, where we're at now, uh, you'd be expecting to see a change in direction across a lot of, a lot of markets. So I'm, that's what I'm looking the evidence for. And the, the data obviously gets updated every Friday. So um, it'll be, that's where I'll be straight in on Saturday, looking to see exactly what's, what has changed uh, and then looking for the follow through then next week on that. Um, yeah, if you, if the, the guys are completely new to, to COT, the main thing I would say whenever you come into the, the platform is to not get too, because a lot of numbers, there's a lot of, a lot of different areas you can get bogged down, but if you're completely new to it, I would say just to keep, keep it simple, uh, pick a market that you're familiar with, maybe based on a seasonal pattern, say we'll look at pound later, but 
try to keep it simple, particularly if you're not used, used to the markets, whenever you are not used to the data. Um, when you come in, you go, oh, the little icon on the left-hand side here, that expands to the chart, so we can actually come in and see what's going on. This comes in and it shows us the weekly chart of the market. Uh, and then it shows us a number of graphs at the bottom. The top one is the commercial index. Uh, and a simple way of using the, the index is you can see whenever the commercial index is at the uh, at its high point up towards 100%. That's typically when the market puts in a low and starts to f starts to rally. And then you'll see whenever it's down at the, the 0% is per typically whenever the market puts in a, a, a top and, and, uh, and we see declines from there. So it'll be a, a nice, easy, simple starting point. Um, but the, the main juice of what we're looking for is really down here, is in, is in these lines. These lines are showing us. Can, can I hold you up? I'm sorry to do it. I just want to go through this. So yeah. if you're a real beginner, just, just come and click on the icon, open up the charts, go to the commercial chart, and largely we're, we're playing opposites. If uh, the uh, commercial chart's at the top, we're looking for the opportunity. And COD isn't set at the top, sell it. It cut his seat at the top and look for some kind of price action confirmation to go short. Yeah, I get asked that all the time and say, but where do I get in? Um, and I, you know, talk about tops and, and tops and bottoms in the market. If you're a trend trader, you're not going to be interested in the tops and the bottoms because you're not going to be trying to be a buyer at the bottom or a seller at the top. Uh, what it does tell you if the, if the market is setting up for a to make a low and start to rally. Obviously, we've been in a downtrend prior to that, so that's telling me you need to stop selling to begin with. Yeah. yeah, if you yeah. are a trend trader, you're probably you're not going to be the first buyer in the market. So what yeah. that signal is telling you is to stop selling the downtrend. Trend is likely over. Wait for the confirmation of the new uptrend and then look to get long again. So it, for a lot of people, particularly, uh, definitely for me, whenever whenever it started using it, it was a case of it was those trades you were losing at the end of trends that had kept me out of, as opposed to actually getting me into lots and lots of great trades. So it stopped me less losers as opposed to more winners. As I developed with it, I was able to then get in earlier and get into better setups. But definitely the first part was, you know, not taking the, the last the last trade in the, in the trend, always catching the end of the trend and then it turns. So that's usually the big help. You jump in that little downtrend, you make a bit of money, you take one trade too many, you give half the money back. It's frustrating. Right? And yeah. that stuff really helps, right? Yeah. So that's, that's usually the first point for, for a lot of people whenever they start with caught, particularly if you are a trend trader, making sure you don't jump in at the end of that trend. Um, and that's def definitely the, the benefit I find whenever I started. But I say it does progress then to get into earlier into the next next move. Um, say that, yeah, looking at the, the, the actual, the, the real juice of what we're looking for is in, is in these lines here. This is the caught data itself. Everything else is derived for, from this, but these are the actual numbers um based that are released each each week and you it's divided by the commercials and the non-commercials the commercials are the hedgers that the 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 producers are the people that actually touch the stuff they say they generally deal with it they transact their heart like the gold they'll be dealing in the physical uh, physical market whereas you've got the non-commercials at the bottom never touch the stuff never see this stuff complete speculation the same way we do Man, I'm going to um, I'm going to keep jumping in if you don't mind. So yeah, no problem. Schools, right, gold miner, jeweler, commercials. They touch the gold. Yes. Uh, trader, non-commercial. We just we just in the market playing the game, right? Yes, that's it. So, and you'll and you'll see that they're generally on the opposite side of each other. Yep. Yeah, they go they go with the opposite directions. Uh, whenever the commercials, the people that touch the stuff, whenever they're buying, we see if we just turn off. I'll turn off this. And uh, I'll turn off that. So we could look at whenever the commercials are buying, it's the non-commercials that be selling. So they're generally on the opposite side of each other. Okay, um, just in case if it's uh, can confuse people, why? Well, this, these are always buying, these are always selling. Uh, that's just the nature of how they 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 operate, uh, and we can use that to our advantage either way. It doesn't matter which side we we're, we're looking at. Um, but the, the the best example to say, just to look at example recently. This is the, the Japanese yen, as I was saying, and we were looking at this is futures data. So a lot of you, most of you are probably used to trading dollar yen. So the, the futures data will be opposite to that. Um, you know, dollar yen had a big rally recently, where you'll see uh, yen futures had a decline. So that was yen yen weakness. But what was the, the main thing going back to, to Christmas? 
um, just before all this rally started. So why why do we use cotton? It's a really good prime example of exactly why you want to be using cotton. Why I use it. You can see the commercials have been steady sellers uh, through this decline, but they only started to get to really heavy areas. If we just zoom out to historical levels, whatever yen really starts to put in major peaks up towards sort of definitely 100 over 100,000. We've got 100 and, uh, 150,000 there, way up to 200,000 contracts. So we're getting up just here before Christmas, getting into the area where we've seen extreme levels of commercial selling. So hold on, Ray, just to be really clear. That line's going up, and, so, and people will think because it's going up, the buying. But this is this is the line. The red line is the selling. The red line is the amount of contracts they're selling. Yes. Okay. So at this stage, the commercials, the people who touch gold, are selling it. This is the, the Japanese yen, but the, yeah, the, the, the yen. Uh, sorry, sorry, the yen. Yeah, 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 yeah. principles the same. And if you the, the people who the businesses they aren't trying to make money from this, so they, uh, they're not using the markets directly. They're not trying to be. Oh look, they caught the top and they made a load of money. That's yeah. not what the commercials are doing. They're using it to offset the risk to their own business directly. So what yeah. they do is they're evaluating the price of a market to determine where is the risk to me. So if I'm you're looking at the price of yen, they'll have teams of analysts at, at this area when yen's here. Where is the risk to our business? Is the risk will it hurt us more if yen goes continues to go up there, or will it hurt us more if it continues to go down if it turns and goes down there? And that's how they'll trade based on that risk. And if you see the big accumulation on one side, then that shows that the risk to them is this way. If they are doing a lot of selling, it's because they believe the market is more likely to go this way big as opposed to that way big. If they were hedging for a move to go up, they would be doing lots of buying in here. Okay. They, They operate in terms of risk. What would hurt my business the most? Yeah. And though these guys being the people that actually have a business that is directly within that market, as opposed to these guys at the bottom who, who don't, they just sit in an office and speculate, don't run any business. Um, these guys tend to be the ones that know what's really going on. Yep. Yep. Right. They've got um, a real interest in the market, right? They're not, they, they've yeah. got a real financial hand. In the they've market. got a real interest exactly in the, in the market. It's their, it's their business is what they do. It's 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 everything they do. So they, they're the ones that have the real interest in protecting their business. Say these guys just speculate in whatever moves. Uh, they don't care what direction it goes. They just, if I can make a few quid, I'll jump in here, I'll jump in there. They have no skin in, actually in the business itself. One of the um, questions about streaming this show onto YouTube is that guys can go back and watch this later on. But you're saying here that dollar the, uh, the yen, not dollar yen, the yen is going up. And while the yen's going up, the commercials are selling. And as the selling gets to an extreme, you're going to go, well, actually, I'm done with this trend now. I've seen I've seen this uh, this extreme bull too high. I know this trend won't continue forever, so I'm out of the uptrend and maybe perhaps looking for shorts. Yes. You can see here, looking at the data, uh, the detail of it, they were quite stable. They were generally going up and quite stable into here, whilst price was quite stable as well. But you'll see we had a little pop just here, and they had a, we had a big jump in shorts. Big jump in short. So within that week, they've obviously evaluated that is this is the limit of uh, in terms of the risk. We don't see a, a further a big move to the upside from this point. So we had a big jump in the short contracts, and they continued to edge higher. Whenever yen, yen didn't really do an awful lot, wasn't going very much further to the upside, but they continued to sell, continued to sell, continued to sell, um, and then seasonally. So typically trying to combine this with seasonals to try to time the move. Cot gives us an idea of what's happening and what's likely to happen, but trying to time it. Uh, that's where seasonality comes into place. And generally at the beginning of the, the beginning of the year, the yen typically gets weaker, the dollar typically gets stronger. Uh, and that's when we start to actually see the move kick in uh, really into action. But we could see it was happening. They didn't see the risk to the, the upside for, for yen, which if I go to a uh, obviously more, You'll be more familiar with a dollar yen chart. Most of you is this area. So yen weakness of their selling the selling the yen. They're looking for dollar yen to move up like this, uh, and this is why we got the move that it was. There was a huge amount of selling. Like this is a, this is a lot uh, a lot of selling going on in here. Uh, it's one of the we've only gone up there 
three times in the last uh, 10 years. Uh, this is a big, big level of selling. And that's why we got the stronger move when we did. There was a lot of activity. There's a lot of money placed there. There was a lot of hedging felt that the market was going to drop significantly. And that's exactly what we uh, what we got. So yen went down and dollar yen went up. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Most of USA would be familiar with trading dollar yen. So that's dollar, dollar yen going up. That's yen weakness derived from the, the selling and the weakness in, in the Japanese yen. And I say, and then it's okay, we could see it was building. It gave us lots of clues building in here. Uh, we could see the cut data building, the seasonal pattern. It's just a case of timing. Definitely the first thing was to not be selling in this down here. It would have been very, very easy to be looking at the chart on its own and seeing that we're breaking through, breaking through the lows, major major th uh, support, breaking the lows and getting caught into breakout trades here. The market was Lower high just before that, right? That yeah. lower high just before that would offer, offer a horizontal level would be super attractive if you're a trend trader and don't know what's going on with the data, right? It's very, very easy to get caught looking at the trend of the chart, we're very much in a downtrend, very easy to get caught into the, the, being the last seller in the market. Um, but say by looking at COT, we can see what was really going on. We can see the direction the market was going to head in. It was just a case of when that was actually going to happen. I say generally start of the year, yen typically weak, weakens, dollar particularly starts to strong and, uh, strengthen the beginning of the year. And then since we started breaking the high, breaking the downtrend, uh, still using the technical analysis to try to time the trade. Uh, but then it gives us a heads up that the market does actually want to break higher. So you'd be a little, little, little more aggressive. You'd, so I do look to get in earlier because of as soon as we see any evidence of what I'm expecting to happen is starting to happen. Like soon, like this paper price action here, trying to get in on, for me, the first higher low if I, if I can. Uh, and then certainly then once we break the trend, we're in a new uptrend. That's an easy one for trend continuation. But keeping out of the last shorts really really important getting in earlier to the longs if you can is fantastic but most people will find the benefit is not taking the, the losing trades being the last person in the trend yes, right the trend right. most so what you said is for you that your your, your use of cut data initially stopped you taking losses and then um helped you to take winners and that's how people tend to lose it right they learn it right they'll start and see cut they'll be on one side of the market and they'll go actually all of a sudden, I'm on the wrong side of this market. I need to get out of my stores. I need to get out of my longs. You know, again, waiting for price action confirmation, but finally to find a way out here. Um, yeah. And wait for this to reverse, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you have to still the technicals still have to find a way to a safe place to actually get in, rather than just you know cuts bullish. I must just buy it on Sunday night when it opens. Um, still have to find a place, a nice, sensible place I can put an entry point, sensible place I can put a stop loss. Uh, so that's the technicals are still really important in there as well. Like it, mate. Cheers. Thank you very much for that. Ash, you with us? I am right here. Mate, if I could, uh, well, I'm going to just uh, grab Ash for a couple of seconds here and see if I can add this up. So uh, one of the things we're going to do today is we're going to give away our strategy broadcast group uh, subscription. It's our favorite prize. At the end of today, we're going to give one of those away. We might even give a couple of those away. And one of the things that we try and do is if you're in the strategy broadcast group, you've got access to the chart. So the cot chart that Ray just sold, you've got access to that. And the seasonal chart, which Ray, Ray will show you soon, you've got access to that. But you've also got access to a summary. Ash, can you show us the summary? Yeah, sure. Now, so I just... we think that uh, being a conditional trader and, and having a condition, having a, a bias, is, uh, <laughs> from Beth Punch, very nice, uh, is really important, right? And um, there are different ways you can do that, but cotton season are really, are really familiar and are really good ways of doing that. So, and I think... Um, so at the moment, uh, Ash is about to show you the uh, the seasonal summary, right? Yeah. So this uh, th this talks through um, all the, the the summary for cot data, uh, seasonal data, and uh, and the fundamentals. Um, so Ray's just talking about um, the timing aspect of it. So just re remembering back to that that particular chart we we did see actually a, a pop really uh, to the upside with uh, with a cot data for for the yen for example so that's that's listed here um as a uh, as a buy signal but then when we when we kind of scroll right down to the bottom then i'm also kind of covering you can see here that the, the the seasonality for uh, for each currency just and then slow, stop stop here for a second please yeah I think one of the things that's really important for people to see is if you can just go back to that that seasonal one, for instance, Ash, right? That yeah. Here, here's our seasonal summary, and I think look, there are people who need, and you're one, Ash, right? 
There are people who need to get into the data, get into the charts, and get into the detail. And there yep. are people who just need to have a look at this. And everyone's different. I, I tend to have a look at this, right? I don't tend to dig in as much as you guys do, right? I'm, I'm more of a big picture guy. You guys are more detailed guys. But what we're trying to do inside the group is provide all of it. So if you're in this group, you can see the summary. That's the first thing you can see, right? And then from the, from the uh, summary, you can go in and you can have a look at a breakdown of a particular currency. Can you show us one of those, Ash? Yeah, so, so exactly that, because it is a summary. It's an overview uh, of the general kind of direction rather than uh, picking uh, the, the absolute kind of turning points from day to day. So if you come right to the bottom, the, mo the most recent kind of um, um, report that I wrote was on the yen. Um, and it just kind of talks about some of the fundamental drivers uh, for that particular currency. And right at the end is, is the, probably the most significant one, because it's really th this does involve some of the timing. And overnight, we had Jerome Powell speaking um, about uh, the, um, the uh, stimulus package and the, and the plan that was going on. And it's this sentence, really. Jerome Powell has reiterated that um, the accommodative stance from the Fed will be in place for some time yet. Now, that doesn't really suggest that we should be looking at going long on a currency that is associated with risk off. So, um, so, that, so you know, and, and I put that in the, in the very last uh, sentence, the global sentiment is still confident. So buying the yen now could prove to be mistimed. And, th and that's really what, um, what I'm trying to do, just, just g give people the overview, put it on a watch list. So we, we know that, um, that we, we, we could be looking for buy signals with the yen, but really we're trying to also line everything up with the seasonal aspect and also some of the fundamental aspect as well. And the fundamentals right now don't suggest that going long yen would be right. So we can then bring it back to uh, technicals as well. So you, in a way, you've got a kind of four pronged attack. If you use the, the cot data, the seasonals, the fundamentals and the, uh, the technical patterns as well. And um, and it can just kind of guide people in, in the best way to potentially manage the trade, because you might get a technical pattern which says go long yen and you might be prepared to take it with the knowledge that you, you, you still might need some fundamental driver, um, which means that you, you could just reduce your risk at that particular point uh, and then uh, and then see if, you know, you, you've got a, uh, an area, but you, you, you're really looking for something to kind of turn the market. Um, and, uh, and it can just get you ahead of it, really, and just understand that you do need a fundamental driver. That, the fundamentals tend to be a bit of a catalyst, where the cot data and the seasonals give you that overall broad view. The, uh, the fundamentals can, uh, you know, tend to be that, that, that catalyst that really drives things in that particular direction. And what this is saying is right now, we just don't have it. Cheers, Ash. So what we're saying is that if you're looking to use the cot and the seasonal data, you can use the summary if you want something you know, just a real basic overview of it. You can come in and get some detail on what's driving it. You can go to the charts like Ray just did and have a look at the card and the seasonal data. Um, and you can listen to the hour long video of Ray. So what we're trying to do is attack cod and seasonal from a number of different points of view. I think that many people when they first see cod in particular, um, there's just a few too many lines on a chart and they get quite confused and it takes a little while. What we're trying to do is give them an opportunity to learn it from really simple stuff, from the picture or the words, from the, from, from the summary or the video, so they can learn it and use it in different ways because it's such a powerful tool when you get to use these things consistently to give yourself a direction. Look, uh, thank you very much for that, Ash. Much appreciated. Uh, uh, no thank you very much. Cheers. Um, Ray, are you back with us? Yes, I am here. Mate, so um, we've talked about uh, different ways of accessing the data, and I think that I'm a big fan of the, of the ability for people to have a look at it in different ways. I think that um, COD is probably, for a lot of retail traders, it's one of those things where um, it just takes a little bit of time to get your head around what's a commercial, what's a non-commercial, um, you know, wh why the red line's going going up and prices going down. It just takes a moment to, to get your head around that. But guys can go back and watch the video of that. But when they do it, it's a really these things are really powerful tools, right? Yeah, it does take... Time, especially if you're completely new, there's a there's a lot of information in the crypto traders. There's a lot of numbers and different different areas, different categories, and there is a lot of uh, info in there to try to break down if you if you're new for it. It took me, I, I honestly, you, I, I couldn't tell you how long it took me to get through. I was started with in an Excel sheet. I had a, uh, I didn't know anything about cot. Uh, trying to 
finding for one line what was a commercial. It took me months to even just get to a point where I understood what one graph was, was meaning. And it took me years to really properly unlock it and have all the graphs and have it all broken down the way I wanted to. So um, it's, I'm not saying it'll take years to understand it, but I didn't have anybody to speak to or ask questions off for, and I didn't have a platform like this to actually look at the numbers. I had to find somebody smart enough on Excel to try to make it for me, uh, which was a, a pain. But yeah, there is a lot in there. Uh, this, the summary group is a really good starting point to try to get it at an overview. Uh, to begin with, I uh, say the, the video I do, the weekly video, I go through the relevant points at that point in time. Like if, if, like a, I certainly do not recommend coming in and looking at all, all the every market in here and opening up and trying to find which line's going up and which is going down. Try to focus on a market that's uh, of, that's of interest to you, uh, something that you're considering maybe based on a seasonal pattern, whether you want to be looking to get long or get short, or the fundamental that the Dash is talking about. And if you focus on that market, uh, if you're expecting the market to go up, see if there's evidence of the buyers coming coming in there, see if there's evidence of the sellers, if you're looking for a decline, et cetera. Rather than just coming in you know, randomly and trying to pick a market and, uh, and work out what each of the lines is doing, that usually won't get you to an answer that quick if you're completely new. Um, that's a hard way to go about it. So focus on a market that you, you're already anticipating something to happen in. This is one of the big breakthroughs, isn't it, right? Ten years ago when you learned it, literally you went and got the cot data off the uh, website um, and uh, it was just numbers. And uh, it was just lots and lots and lots of numbers. And the charting of it, the graphing of it, the charting of it has made it, when people look at it now and go, oh, that's there's, there are different things, but it's so much simpler than it was before it was charted, right? It really is learnable uh, and, uh, for, for everybody at this point, right? Absolutely. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a visual person, so if you put something into a graph, I can straight away start to break it down and see what it's telling me. Um, and that's what it took me a long time to try to understand which numbers within the cut data I wanted to put onto a graph, uh, and, you know, and what, how I wanted it to be displayed. So that took a long time to work, uh, work out and I needed to understand what the cut data was telling me, first of all, to know which numbers to put on the graph. Um, but once it's there and we've got it, we've got it now, we can see that see the numbers and we can see the changes. Uh, especially if you are a visual person, it should be very easy to get getting out and get on to uh, and jump on board with. So, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll make it entirely completely new to it, but uh, it'll become second nature very quickly. And I understand we're going to have a look at Bitcoin, we're going to have a look at gold and silver, we're going to have a look at cable. One of the things I'd like to do, Ray, is have a look at some seasonal charts because we've had a bit of a look at some cot charts. As we run through uh, some of these uh, these uh, products, we have a chance to have a look at uh, seasonal charts on some of them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, this, the seasonal charts, obviously, within the, the, the website, obviously, there's the, there's the separate... See, I need to share my screen. Hold on. Um, there we go. That's me. Take. So, yeah, you've got, you've got the, the separate section with the... With all the seasonal charts in, I'll be looking at our forex markets in a, in a second. Uh, okay, sorry, Ray. For our clients, for people who are, are with um, Access to Wealth, uh, uh, if you're in the uh, strategy, uh, the uh, bias group, you have access to this through the members area. You can see these charts that Ray's showing. You can see the seasonal stuff. And there's seasonal stuff here, group for forex, and there's seasonal stuff attached to the cotton uh, information as well, right? Yes, I'm trying to, uh, to get rid of this at the top so I can get to my. Mm. What's going on, buddy? I do. Uh, this usually goes away at the top so I can actually access my because the, <laughs> the tabs are behind it. Um, why is it are, not going you, away? are you having some problems? Um, is, Zoom, is Zoom not sharing this very clearly for you? Is that what you're saying? Or it's... No, the, the, in my screen share, could you see all the, the icons at the top? Do you see all the, because this, this normally disappears, hides itself, and then I can access the tabs are behind and I can't get into the tabs. Um, this, I'll try and open the notes on there behind that, which is why I can't get access to it. But let me see. Uh, 
Where am I? Sorry, bear with me for a second. Yeah, so there's a separate section on the on the website for the seasonal data, but you'll also see within the within the, the cot platform, you'll see the arrows on the side. So as a quick as a quick reference, if you just want to see, you know, a couple of markets rolling going through the uh, full bunch, as a quick reference, you'll see the arrow at the side here, and you've got the seasonal pattern for each. So if you click on that, the seasonal pattern will come up as well. So it's a useful reference rather than having to jump back and forward. If you are starting with the, the cot data, um, I mentioned there, yes, that this, this seasonal seasonally we're in a really interesting uh, point. Um, we we are. I mentioned that May typically is a, a changing changing point. If we look here, this is a, a heat map. It's a historical. It's at a really high level. It takes the percentage change, historical percentage change that we have on the seasonal charts, uh, and plots them for each market on it just so in a figure we can see straight away in one table uh, and generally you'll see here that a lot, a lot of our forex markets do well in april and you'll see that the dollar index has its worst month of the year in april and it's got absolutely smashed this month um it's weaker than what i was ex expecting but the weakness itself was buying on that's exactly what you'd expect to, to happen um but you'll see there's a very very distinct change right here and it typically is right. We'll take a look at the seasonal charts in a second. It pretty much is right buying on the first sort of first second of, of May. Um, big change from a lot of markets being green to a lot of markets going red. And that's typically what we, we see. A lot of markets tend to change direction. Some of you may be interested in as, as well is a lot of the, the metals tend to follow suit. And we see a very similar change in, uh, in May. Um, and the interesting one, with well, the dollar typically has its weakest month of the year in April, it typically has its best month of the year in May. I not expect it to have its best month of the year this year, but I would expect it to be positive. Um, and I do expect to see trend changes pretty much from where we are. So my view for next week is expecting for uh, looking for changes in direction based on what we see on these seasonal these seasonal patterns. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, uh, going in then to the actual seasonal patterns themselves. Pounds one I've mentioned already, and it's it's one that's very high on my list. And if you look through a lot of the seasonal charts, particularly for the the, cur the currencies, you'll see this. Uh, that a lot of them tend to have a change in direction. Pound did okay at the start of the year, and then we seen that we seen the weakness through uh, end of February through to latter part of March. It has been positive through. The last five six weeks, just it's had a, it's really underperformed. Uh, it's really underperformed that period. Um, so it's pretty much done like this. So it's underperformed its seasonal bullish period. So if it's underperforms a pattern, it typically will uh, indicate that this is the direction that the market actually wants to go in. Um, and as we get into this period, I wouldn't be surprised if we did start to see a bit of an acceleration from from that to the, the downside uh, pound is a market I'm looking at, and I would like to get should be short off. Uh, right now, I just don't like the chart. But the seasonal pattern is there, the seasonal bias is there, and it is following the seasonal pattern, which is important. Uh, it's important to see that the market is actually following the pattern rather than just assuming, well, it has to do this next week. Um, that's not using the seasonal pattern correctly it needs to be following and showing it is actually following the seasonal pattern and then if it is we can use the seasonal pattern then to project that it'll uh, it'll continue to follow that pattern in that way she is right okay do you want me to go through the uh, data on uh, pine while i'm while i'm here or yeah let's, 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 let's do that please if we can finish off on the pound that would be great so pound okay is yeah uh, seasonally right so the, the, the seasonal bias, uh, whatever, if you're new to the cut on seasonality, it'll take time to, to remember or to, to keep an, an eye on each of the seasonal patterns. But actually in time, you'll remember a lot of them off the top of your head. Pound typically uh, does well in April. It typically does uh, underperforms in May. Then does typically does well in July and typically are really weak at the beginning of August. So things like that you'll tend to, to remember. Um, so I always have it in the back of my head. So certainly looking at the, the chart for pound, the bias has been to be long. Um, through through April, it didn't really give us many opportunities. It uh, didn't really start to look until we broke through resistance in, uh, in here. And it hasn't really followed through. So it hasn't given us an awful lot. So over the seasonal period, 
from the end uh, latter part of March through to the end of April. Yes, it's up, um, but it has uh, it's not been the strongest of uptrends. It's not really given many buying opportunities. Seasonally now, uh, to try and back up where we're likely to go or what we're going to actually do, that's what we're using COT, cot for. Um, as I said earlier, the data will be updated again tomorrow, tomorrow night. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what comes through from the data, what confirmation of these the seasonal changes we're looking for. But essentially, uh, at this point, where I'm looking for a change of direction, it is the commercials that I will be focusing on. And if I'm looking for uh, expecting a market to go down, I will be looking for commercial selling. Um, so as I was saying earlier, if you have the market in an idea of which market you want to look at, if you have an idea of what direction you're expecting it to go in, then you can come in and look for the actual numbers. You know which line to get to before you actually start to analyze all the lines. Um, I know looking at Pound, there's only really one line I'm interested in, and it's, it's this commercial selling line. How much selling are they doing? Uh, I want to see these guys increase in their short contracts. And they did, interestingly, last week. Bearing in mind that we've pretty much stuck here around 138, 139, just below that 140 area. We're not really going very far. But last week on that little tiny pop we had, just about 100 points, um, they they jumped up here quite a bit. Uh, you normally, you'd expect price to to move a bit for them to go. This is far enough. This uh, that's we can hedge our risk the other way. They're actually building a short position whilst the market is going sideways, um, which again suggests they don't see a big break above 140. They're not protecting themselves for the risk above 140. Um, they bit bare, right? We could get to 141. That's not gonna, you know, they're not gonna go bust if it goes to 141. Um, but they're seeing certainly with the, the way they're per behaving in here. They're every time we get into this area, you see the big jump up in the short contracts, which suggests they're predicting for a move to the to the downside. This Friday, I, I would really like to see that jump up if we can get back up towards these previous highs, 120,000 there, 127,000 there. If we can see another jump up this week in the shorts, that'll certainly be the confirmation. We're looking for pound shorts. I want to be short pound. Then it's a case of where you actually want to be short. And it's a per personal preference, whether you're a trend trader, a range trader, a reversal trader, whatever the sort of structure you like to trade. Personally, for me, I, I don't like this type of really tight range. This is not this type of structure. I like a nice trending market, a market that's moving. I can sell the top easily. I can buy the bottom easily. I can trade in the middle easily. So it's a personal preference. I can, I want to be short. I can see the seasonal biases to be short. I can see the commercials are selling, uh, are building a, a short position to hedge for that move to the downside. Now it's a point, I, I'm just going to click the button and say sell here. I'm not going to do that. Um, that's about finding a safe and sensible area to put my entry and my stop loss. Uh, I possibly may look for reversal next week from this 140 level, maybe. Um, but it's, it's, it's not the, the type of chart that I will get excited by. I may have to wait for a break first. But it is important. The, the, the technical is actually the point where you enter. It's not a case if you look at the number at the weekend and you just buy and sell on Monday or Sunday night at the open. That's not, not what we're doing at all. Um, you still have to find uh, an entry. You still have to find your or follow your normal technical rules, whatever they happen to be. Uh, maybe use of pivots or break and a retest of pivots or moving averages, whatever. It's still use your, your entry rules. Uh, this cut in the seasonals is just giving us that bias where the market's likely to move to. And then we take action based based on that. What it, do, what it is telling me, I mentioned there, but not by taking the wrong trade. It's telling me the likelihood is that pound isn't going to go here unless something really strange happens and a big change in this market. Pound's not going there. Um, what I wouldn't be surprised in, though, is that we may see an attempt. We may see an attempt, a failed attempt to get above here get to around maybe 140, 140, 50, and then, then break straight back in. And it'd be very easy to get caught in to a long, very similar to what we did in here. It'd be very easy to get caught long on the wrong side, thinking, oh, we're in a bullish chart. We've broken out to the upside. We're breaking through resistance. This chart's going all the way to 150. And lots of retail, generally retail traders, uh, sorry, get caught in the long trade here and the market swings around and, and actually goes the way it really wants to go. So right. I won't be chasing along in there if we break. I will be using that as a way to get short. 
Can I just uh, reconfirm this, the, uh, the, the, uh, the process, Ray? So the first thing that happened for you is you had a look at a seasonal chart, and that seasonal, seasonal chart has been bullish, but it's becoming bearish. So that gives us looking for a straw. We've gone to the commercials, and we've had a look on COD. Now, new commercial data tomorrow. So this will update further. What we're seeing at the moment is we're seeing the red line, which is the shorts going up, suggesting that the commercials are building short positions. So we know that seasonally, it's looking down, that the commercial traders are starting to sell it, which eventually will bring pressure to, to bring it down as well. Um, and then it's a matter of looking for uh, our price action, our technical setup, our way of trading to take advantage of that short. Yes. Nice. Right? That's it's one of the things, right? It's, 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 you know, it's, um, you know, I think it's pretty simple, really, isn't it? So it's seasonal, red line on commercials, looking to get our, to get our shorts, right? Yeah. Say so if you just come into the the data, the COP data, and start looking at numbers, it will it will make zero sense. And really, like, there's there's too much going on here to try to get an answer based on that. But if I can start with pound, I can start with a seasonal chart. I can see we're following the seasonal pattern. My bias is now for a change of direction to go short. From that, instantly, I'm only interested in one line. Uh, if we're going to go sh uh, go lower, and it's before the move happens. I'll expect the commercials to be building a short position. The trend followers is the reason why I'm not looking at these lines at the bottom. These guys will be following the trend. These uh, these speculators will do exactly what, what what most traders do. They'll be buying if the market's going up. You can see they've been buying it here. So if I'm expecting a change of trend, the positions of these guys generally won't help because they will still be following the trend until it changes. These guys won't start selling or increase in selling until it is actually going down. So that's why I'm looking at this line and not that line. So commercials it's, it's, ahead of, it's ahead of the move. It's before the move. So commercials are the one you'll look at before the move happens, which is uh, the best way to combine with um, seasonals. Cool. Look, let's um, let's go through a few more charts because this is quite interesting. And uh, let's we're going to do gold, silver, and Bitcoin. We'll finish with Bitcoin, I reckon, because that's going to be great fun. But let's let's have a look at gold first. Gold's uh, an interesting one. Um, We've broken out above 1760, real nice level technically on the chart. Um, and we're in we're in this zone to say we've got above 1760, nice level on the chart. Seasonally, gold does perform well it historically, not mass, not really, it's not a really strong month for it, but it typically does go up in uh, in April. Um We've now broken out, become a nice little retracement back towards the 1760. So it'll be in a lot of people's uh, eyes or view and, and list of what they're doing. I want to be long this. We're breaking out. We're in an uptrend. We've had a little phase two, a little retracement back into a level of support. And this should be uh, looking for a move to the upside. Uh, looking at the data, let's start with, let's start with a seasonal pattern. Seasonal pattern, as I mentioned, gold generally does go up in April after after being after being weak uh, through the latter part of February and through through March. Uh, we generally do go up. May isn't the greatest month. Um, I've generally been saying since the start of the year that I wasn't expect oh wrong button. I wasn't expecting a big rally in in May or in gold until at least the end of May or not into uh, June. Uh, I think that's that's still the plan, plan for me. I'm not getting massively excited about where gold is. Um, I have been buying stocks. I think it's the safest way to, to do it. It's been buying accumulating stocks at the at lower prices, but actually buying leverage position in here, I, I'm not particularly excited by it, to be honest. So seasonally, it is a bit weaker in uh, in May. Not huge weakness, but more of a lack of buying as opposed to to, to anything really. Um, the cot data very much in line with very much in line with that. Uh, I'll scroll. Now, if we're looking for the market's pretty much been in a downtrend. If we're looking for a big uh, big move to the upside here, before that move kicks in, we should be looking for or expecting commercial buying. And if we look at the commercials, and they're, they're, uh, we can turn off any of these, by the way. You can see this, the short and the net. I haven't mentioned the, the net, but we'll just from generally focus on the long and, and the short. Um, I want to focus on commercial buying, and they've been zero interest in being buyers in here. 
zero interest in being buyers in here, which has not been the case whenever we've had the previous beginning of the big rallies previously. There's been a lot more levels of buying. We're all the way down here. So commercials still don't see the need to hedge to a big move to the upside. I see a lot of people talking about gold going to back to 2000, going to 2400, going to all sorts of crazy numbers. Um, the people that operate in this business are not hedging against that. They don't, and that tells me they don't see the risk of that happening is significant enough that they need to step in and hedge against it. They're just not doing it. Uh, what they are still doing is they are still holding a fairly significant short. Again, if we go back to when we've started fairly uh, big, uh, the big rallies, you can see these levels, the shorts, when they don't see the move to the downside and we start these lows, we form these lows in the market, their shorts drop away off, generally down towards 200,000 contracts. They're still sitting here around the 300,000 contracts, which is historically a fairly high level. We've been above, yes, but it's not historically where you'd expect. So looking at the people who operate within the gold market, they are not hedging in anticipation for a big rally. And that's worrying of obviously if I'm looking at a chart I want to be a buyer in here we could get a little bounce um we could get a little bounce in through here but this goal's doing exactly what I had expected to do we've come up come above level of resistance come into it we haven't followed through there's a lot of resistance o overhead I would be my view is that gold will either consolidate or maybe bounce a little bit around here I wouldn't be surprised if we break back below that support um but until we get into the latter part of may maybe june i think then conditions can change what i really want to see for me to be a really in, uh, interested buyer in gold is i need to see evidence that they no longer see the need to hedge short uh, i want to see the short positions drop away ideally down to the 200,000 contracts and if they can then step in on the long side, and that's the evidence that we need that they are seeing the need to hedge for a move against a move uh, to the upside. They're not doing that yet. So I'm not particularly bullish. I haven't been bullish gold since the start of the year, and I'm not bullish gold yet. The plan has been May, June is the likely point. And that's pretty much the, this, how it is. It hasn't changed, it hasn't deviated at all. Um, silver, very, very similar. If anything, slightly more on the, on the bearish side. We've seen a bigger bigger accumulation again on the commercial shorts. They're really stepping in again, again over the last couple of weeks where we've seen a little bit of a move up to the, to the upside in silver. Commercials have stepped in back to the points where we've seen the recent peaks in this market. They're stepping in, they're hedging to the, to the, to the upside again. Um, so uh, silver, just like gold, it looks like it's contained in here. Seasonally, uh, silver is typically weaker than gold through this period. Uh, again, it's another market that typically doesn't perform until we get into to June. So this would really be the, uh, the sweet point for all the, all the dates and everything to li line up. Uh, the market really comes out to, li to life July, August, September, generally. Uh, so I am actually bullish in, in metals, but just not not yet. Uh, the likelihood is to say slightly bearish. I don't see big declines in either market either, um, but I just I don't see big rallies at this point. Cheers, mate. What about, uh, to wrap it up, let's, uh, let's do Bitcoin and Mike and do her draw. Now, you see that Bitcoin is a little bit different than the way you use the cot then. Bitcoin is different is in that I've mentioned we've got the two main groups. You've got your commercials and your non-commercials. Uh, your non-commercials would generally be the trend followers. Um, and in Bitcoin, generally, we, we've been predominantly in uptrends, but you'll actually see that the non-commercials have always been short this market. You'll see there the red line has is, is always been above the, the, the green line. So that shows they've had a, a larger short position throughout and have continued to do that. So they haven't behaved normally as trend followers as such. That's quite, that is very, very rare. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the flip side of this, the commercials have actually been the buyers in, in the market as we've trended higher. What is re really interesting is when they've done that buying. Um, we only have two years of data for the caught data. Um, the futures contract was only released in April. April 8, uh, I think it was April or, or 18. So we have the data going back through that. There is a seasonal chart I'll take a look at in a second. Um, but what was re really interesting, if we, look, if we look at the data, going back to the first point, whenever commercials 
started buying their their history of when they have decided to buy is phenomenal um it's a low low numbers but it's the it's the fact that they're actually doing it so if i to focus on their on their buying you'll see they stepped in here and if you go and look at look at the bitcoin chart uh in the january 19 february 19 they stepped in it's the first time they ever done any buying and the contract had been out for about seven or eight, uh, eight months, I think. And it's the first time they'd done any buying. And that was the uh, February ni uh, 19. If we go back February 19 on, on Bitcoin, most of you would probably re remember. February 19 was this area here. This is the first time commercials, uh, they used the uh, contract in the futures market commercials to be to be long and be buyers wasn't at high levels but it's the, it's the fact it's the time that they actually did it whilst bitcoin then we seen we seen the rally but then we st stayed pretty much in this, this big uh, swings but we prayed stayed pretty much between sort of 12,000 to the 7,000 stayed within that range you'll see the cop data went completely flat they didn't do take any action through that point whatsoever um and at this point, I was still looking at the data, wondering, is it going to be of use to us? There's no commercials. It's, there's nothing in here. They then started to be buyers again. And you might be interested. You can come, come and look at the data yourself afterwards and go and look at the chart. But we have in here, we have April, May uh, 2020. Then they started to be big buyers again, uh, just towards September, October. And as we rushed up, this is really, really interesting. When we rushed up to the previous all-time high, the 20,000 area, when we rushed up to that area, they were hedging. Now, these are commercials. They're not buying this because they want to profit from it going up. They're hedging against an, an increase. They expect to see uh, the market to go up, and they're hedging against that increase. And they continually bought prior to the, to the breakouts, to the highs. So really, really, it's rare that you would get it within a trending market that they believe it's so strong that we have to hedge against the continuation of the trend. Normally you'd see a retracement and then that they buy, but they are even within these consolidations, they're heavy, heavy buyers. And they've continued to be right up until the last couple of weeks when they've started to ease, ease in there. Uh, and Bitcoin has went fairly flat since that, but they were heavy, heavy buyers throughout all of this period. And now they've eased off as we've been into that point and the volumes dropped over and the market started to roll over as a, as a consequence. But the uh, the numbers of contracts we're looking at here is small within the commercials, but their inf information and what they've actually done has been phenomenal. They've been always been buyers before a breakout. They've always been a buyer within a consolidation before we break to a new high. Um, so very, very usable, usable in a different way because I say the the... the doing it slightly differently, but it's, you still read it the same way. They're still hedging. If you're uh, buying heavily, if you're hedging against a rally. So you read the data exactly the same way. Uh, it's just you may not have expected them to do it. That's the only the, the only real main difference to it. Um, but phenomenal track record so far. We've only got two years, but phenomenal track record of what they've actually been doing in there. Um. I'm going to see if I can. I'm going to see if I can verbalise this correctly. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Right, feel free to jump in. We're going to do the draw in a minute. But so what happens is that uh, the commercials go. Well, if it goes down, I'm going to make money. But if it goes up, I'm at risk here. So I'm going to buy some to protect myself. They're, they're always. What, uh, their actions will always be a, uh, to protect against that move. So we looked at yen earlier, and they were selling. And that's because they are then anticipating the market to go down. So they always protect against the move they next expect. Okay. 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 And in the Bitcoin, the move that they've been expecting is up. So to hedge against that, they need to buy. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's always the move that they're expecting, whether they're buying. So the, what they're doing tells you the direction where they expect it to go. Cheers. Right. Look, it's really cleared it up for me. I'm going to, um, well, my does the draw in a few seconds, and we're going to give away uh, a month of the strategy bias groups so people can access this data and have a have a have a chance to uh, to use it. Um, I'm just going to have. Two, do you have two minutes just to look at the the yep, yep, seasonal, yep. seasonal chart of Bitcoin? Yes, it's. I, I want I want to mention it because it's a an interesting one. It goes like that. Yeah, and that's not not a mistake. That's exactly what it what it does. 
Um, we don't have, a few people have asked me for seasonal data for Bitcoin. And we, we only have eight years. Well, actually it was 2010 had come out, but the price action in the early years was weird and gappy and it wasn't easy. So we've got eight years of data in here. And obviously it skews everything that we, we have this huge move to the upside. We'll take a look at the chart in a second, but whenever I pl plotted this to see what it was actually doing, I went and investigated further to see what it actually did. And if we do that, there's a lot of really interesting things that we're currently not seeing. Obviously, we're in here. April, historically, is a month where we can see declines. Another month, it's either as July as well. So you can't quite see that because it's very much skewed to the, to the, uh, to the upside at the end of the year. If we go and look, I've got a chart here with all of this on. And the green boxes are October and November. Uh, and the best way to look at this is a, as a log chart. I'll not go and dwell on that, but seasonal data looks at the percentage change in price. Um, a log chart is percentage change in price as well. And you'll see the, the big move, and which is why we've such a skewed um, seasonal pattern is 2013 with a big, big move. 2017 as well, we had a big move in October and November. But you'll see all of the green boxes out of, I think it's seven out of the uh, eight years have been positive and a lot of them have been very much positive. Interestingly as well, the, the seasonal bearish period, the red boxes every year is either April or July. Um, so go and uh, take, I would recommend this way, any seasonal pattern, if you're looking at, the, at a seasonal pattern, don't just assume it has to go up. Go and take a look at the last few years, see how it's actually behaved, how it's formed. It will give you a real good heads up on when you, where you could actually potentially get an, an, an entry point because the pattern may repeat itself uh, throughout. But a, definitely a really clear pattern over this last eight years. End of the year, October, November in particular, uh, has been very strong for a crypto. And pretty much where we are at the moment, this April, June and July period uh, tends to be the weakest. We tend to have spikes either in, in April or both. We can see uh, April and July as well in these areas. Um, so yeah, and that's pretty much what we're getting. So we can see the cut data is lining up. I didn't go into all, all the detail of all, everything is in the cut data, but they're not hedging against a further, they've actually eased, the commercials have eased their buying in this area. Um, they're not hedging, they see, don't see the need to be uh, continually buying the way the levels they previously were. Uh, and it's historically, this was a period where we see the, the weakness. Not expect a big decline in Bitcoin, but we may not see a big rally until uh, for another couple of months may bounce around in here. Um, so we only have eight years of seasonal data, but there is a lot of repetition if you go and actually look at the performance. So there has been a lot of repetition over those eight years, which is really, really interesting. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Bitcoin is one of those things where I'm slowly trading more and more and a little bit of, uh, a little bit of help around timing would be, uh, would be great because it's really easy to get these things. And one of the crypto does it, it, it tests your metal, right? Then you, um, so if you can type your question in, uh, that we will answer it. We're the raising hand and we, we can't uh, do much with that. But if you have a question, just type it in. You can type it into Zoom, type it into Facebook, type it into YouTube, we'll help you out. Um, there's a real temptation to try and buy and hold uh, Bitcoin. But if you do that, you've got to be prepared to take a 20% you know, cut in two days. That really is quite violent. So if you work out when I was going to do that and take some money before, that'd be pretty helpful. Yeah, no, I, I would like, I do own a fair variety of coins and I would like to buy more, um, but I'm holding off on that, the buying of more of them because just timing wise, I think there's still the probability and the likelihood of another spike down. Could be very short and sweet uh, spike down, but uh, over the next couple of months is when we're likely to, to see them. So I'm just biding my time, not adding in right at the at the peaks in a lot, a lot of markets. Uh, if we're going to see your know, declines, it'll be over the next couple of months. Um, and certainly then September, October, November, I want to be in, I want to have my positions by August at least. So uh, now is not the time to be aggressive. Now is the time to generally prepare for dips. I've got orders in lower. Crypto is the kind of market we can see just one day dr drops very, very quick. Um, so have the orders in to, to try to catch catch those. But generally we will see dips over these couple, next couple of months. And we'll keep a pretty sharp eye on May 14th. May 14th is the day that we're looking for US stock markets to sell. So I'll be interested to see how that, uh, that runs together as well. Because one of the things you've got, right, is you've got May as being the strongest month for US dollar, right? Yes. 
And if, if uh, US dollar rallies, you would expect to see Bitcoin very likely to uh, to pull back a little bit. Very hard for Bitcoin to go up while US dollar is going up, which is value then, right? Yeah, yeah. No, so de definitely the uh, next few weeks are going to be interesting. We typically do see a lot of changes in direction. I do think markets can will, will struggle. I think equities will struggle over the next couple of months. Um, so yeah, it will be a, it will be a time of change, particularly the next an FX over the next uh, few sessions, just uh, fairly quickly in the next week. I think Aussie Pound Kiwi are very much on my my list, m most to the to the downside. So it's about trying to find those short entries. And just being patient and finding the good ones, right? It's not about just having a bias and diving into markets. It's about having a bias and being patient and taking a take good entry, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, uh, I've, I've had my bias. Um, I didn't mention Kiwi and Aussie, but they're very similar to the pound in terms of the seasonal pattern. Um, my bias is I actually want to be short Kiwi, but I've bought it this week. You know, I know that the seasonal pattern is the likelihood is we'll start at the end of the month and the next week. The chart's still strong. I would actually like to sell it at a higher level. So I'm happy to, to buy it into that higher level as well. So, you know, I'm not going kind to of spend the next three weeks trying to short it. Um, you can look up at the charts doing. Obviously, you don't want to be caught in the last uh, the last trade. But if the, if the market's still bullish and likely to head to a level, I want to take that and then try to be on the short side from it as well. So uh, just having the understanding of what the market's going to try to do over the next few sessions. Cheers, Rick. Excuse, oh, sorry, Ray. Uh, excuse the yawning. It's uh, been a long day of flying. No, it's fine. Oh, I'm I'm a good mate. I, I really have. And um, I think one of the uh, biggest things we can do, cotton seasonals are really strong tools if we can demystify them for people, right? The more we can bring these back to nice, simple things, really, uh, the, the better off we are. And um, look, for people who are learning, uh, who are listening and learning to this, I do encourage you to go back and have a look at the recording in the future and get this stuff clearer and clearer because understanding when trends are starting and finishing. It doesn't matter what type of trader you are, it makes a huge, huge difference. Mate, um, anything you haven't looked through anything you're gonna do before I have my uh, do our draw? No, I'm, I'm good, I don't wanna overload people too much. Cheers, mate. Mike, can we do the draw, please? Who's gonna win uh, one month, one month of the uh, market bias group, who's gonna win it? Is my name on there? Well, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a code name. Whichever name comes up is a code name for Ray. Chun, can you confirm for us that you're in the room? We'll give you 15 seconds. Can you come in the chat and tell us that you're in the room? If you can tell us that you're in the room, then you will be the winner. If, uh, if you don't tell us, uh, hey, congratulations, mate. Mai will pass your details on to James. James will be in touch and make sure that you collect the prize. What we are going to do is give anybody else in the room um, a chance to uh, try this out if they want to try it out. Mike's going to put a link in there. We are going to give you guys a one month free trial if you sign up and you get one month free before you start paying for it. And that'll be at the discounted rate of $97 a month, not the full $197. So if you do want to try uh, try and use the data, access the summary that uh, Ash does, the, more, the, the uh, product by product rundown that Ash does, uh, and, and the... Um, the seasonal charts and the uh, uh, the cot data and the uh, the uh, hourly uh, the hour long video from Ray each uh, each week. If you want to try those, then click on the link and uh, join for cotton seasonal data. And if you just want to learn a bit about it, then uh, I'm pleased to join us today. I thought it was brilliant, Ray. Uh, once again, uh, thank you very much. We'll have you back at some stage in the future. I can see a couple of chats, but I think they're just people doing the prizes. They are. There we go. Mate, I am. Uh, I'm going to let you go because we've run over a little bit. Have a wonderful morning in uh, in Ireland, mate. So get in, enjoy the haircut, enjoy the pub tomorrow. Get around to golf, and eh? Yeah, I will. I got golf for Saturday evening, so I've got a very busy few days planned between hair, pub, and golf. It's gonna be. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Enjoy. I hope people see you in uh, Singapore too far away. No worries. All the best, guys. Cheers, mate. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us on uh, Your Trading Experts, uh, Media Trading Experts Live and Free. We'll be back next Thursday with Julian, and uh, we will uh, talk to him about uh, being a conditional trader and the conditions that he uses. Thanks to Ash for coming in. Thanks for Ray for coming in. Thanks for Mike for the help, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight, guys. We'll see you next week. Cheers, everybody.